Hello, everyone. My name is Marty Ravenhorst, and I'm glad to be with you here today to talk about iris, one of my favorite subjects, and particularly the use of manganese coated iris uh, and its value, particularly when the soil temperatures are cooler early in the growing season. And I acknowledge my other many co authors here who've all helped in collecting data and doing analysis of the data and sorting through our conclusions. So, iris, I think everyone knows, is an acronym for indicative reduction in soils. It's been in use for about 15 years. It started out as PVC pipe that was coated with iron oxide paint. And as we've used these over the last 15 years, there's been a number of limitations. The main problem has been, it's been difficult to get the data in a quantitative way from this three-dimensional cylinder for analysis, the image. And so, um, but in addition, there's been some issues with abrasion of the tubes and, some general environmental sustainability since there's so much of this waste PVC plastic that gets generated in the, these iris tubes. So the new iris that we're promoting now is made from thin films, 10 mil sheets of rigid vinyl film. So it's the same PVC material. Uh, the dimensions are pretty much the same, the same length, the same surface area, uh, but it uses a lot less plastic and uh, they're rolled up inside polycarbonate tubes that are completely reusable. And then uh, the main benefit is that you, it, they're easy to get data from. You can simply put them in a document scanner in a matter of a few seconds, you can get a nice JPEG image that can then be subject to various sorts of analysis. And the other thing in the last few years is the uh, development of a manganese coating, uh, burnisite paint that can also be used uh, for iris. Uh, Almost since iris was invented, there's been an interest in uh, having a manganese uh, coating because uh, iron oxides actually reduce under very strongly reducing conditions. And uh, manganese oxides like burnisite, pyrolusite, these reduce under conditions that are more similar, what we'll call moderately reducing conditions, more similar to where we might get other important environmental reactions like denitrification. So there's a significant area in this EHPH diagram where we would expect manganese oxides to be reducing, demonstrating reducing conditions when uh, iron may not be. So the fundamental concept of iris is you make a pilot hole and then you insert the iris device down in the pilot hole, the soil becomes anaerobic and as that happens the microbes that are present start looking for alternate electron acceptors and uh, they use these oxide coatings. And so as they reduce the iron of the manganese oxide coatings, uh, they get solubilized and stripped off. And then you can quantify these areas that uh, are light colored on the, on the films. And so what we're able to do is uh, here are five replicate iron films. And using some pretty basic uh, image processing, we can convert these into binary images, which then can be very carefully analyzed quantitatively. And uh, so um, the technical committee says that we should focus on the upper 30 centimeters of the soil because uh, that's considered the upper part. And the way they propose doing it is you identify a 15 centimeter zone somewhere entirely within the upper 30 centimeters where you get the maximum paint removal. And you look at uh, sort of the median value among the, you know, what a majority of the films demonstrate. And they say that if a majority have more than 30% removal within some, within a 15 centimeter zone, within the 50, upper 30 centimeters, then that constitutes reducing conditions. So the driving factors in this whole process, you've got saturation. The longer things are saturated, the more it leads to reducing anaerobic conditions, reducing reduction of the iron manganese coatings. Uh, because it's microbially mediated, temperature also affects this. So under warmer conditions, you get more paint removal. And our analysis indicates there's sort of a significant threshold of around 11 degrees. So when the soil temperatures are cooler than 11 degrees, uh, like 52 Fahrenheit, then uh, you get less removal than when the temperatures get above that. And then, of course, the coating type is important. And as that's predicted by thermodynamics, you get more and faster removal of manganese oxide coatings than you do from iron oxide coatings. So the experiment that I want to report on is actually uh, a collection of experiments that was in, involved all these investigators. Uh, we had 18 study sites distributed across eight states. And among those, we had 40 different plots that were set up. 
And in each of these, we installed five replicate iron films and five replicate manganese films that we were deployed for a month. And during that same time, we measured water tables and temperatures so that we could document uh, the hydric soil committee uh, technical standard hydrological requirement, which is continuous saturation within the upper 25 centimeters. And then uh, we collected these over a couple of years. So in 2018, we actually had 66 data sets and then in, we picked up another 30 in 2019. So we have a total of 96 data sets from you know, across a wide geographical area uh, in, a, in a variety of conditions. And those are what we wanna report on today. So we're gonna see four graphs here are two for iron. <coughs> And we've split these out based on temperature. So these, uh, this upper graph represents the 41 data sets that had temperatures, average soil temperatures between five and 11. And then the lower of the other 55 data sets that had soil temperatures between 11 and 19 degrees C. And the x-axis shows the iris threshold that was used to determine whether or not something was reducing. So right now, for example, the technical committee specifies that there should be 30% removal. And that's what's uh, highlighted right here. And then the y-axis is the percentage of the various observations. So the percentage of the 41 observations there and the 55 observations down below. And there are four possible outcomes. In yellow, we get the possible outcome that it's not reducing and not wet. And by not wet, we mean it doesn't meet the technical standard hydrological requirement of continuous saturation for 14 days in the upper. 25 centimeters. And uh, so in redu not reducing means that uh, it doesn't have the, the threshold, doesn't exceed the threshold specified here along the x-axis in terms of the amount of iris paint that was removed. So if we look at this particular case, for example, so, so the, 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 the yellow is, the, is an optimal, it's a consistent condition. It's not saturated, or, and it's not wet, and it's not reducing. The other kind of consistent optimal kinds of response is shown in blue, where it is both wet and reducing. That is, it meets the uh, technical standard hydrology requirement, and it also is shown as reducing based on the particular threshold for the iris paint removal. And so uh, ideally, all of our observations, I think, would fall into either the yellow or the blue. Uh, but there's also two uh, alternate sort of non-consistent uh, responses. The, the green shows cases where the, the soil meets the technical standard hydrological requirement, but it does not meet the iris threshold requirement for reducing conditions. So we call that would be wet, but not reducing. And then the alternate is what's shown in orange, which is where it meets the iris threshold. It's shown to be reducing, but it doesn't meet the technical standard hydrology requirement. Uh, so it's not wet in that regard. Now, if we look up here under these, the iron, low temperature iron conditions uh, at the 30% threshold, which is currently specified, what we see is that among those soils that meet the, the technical standard hydrology requirement, almost a half of them do not meet the reducing requirement based on the iris threshold. And uh, we actually get sort of an optimal condition down here where we only had 5% of paint removed. And so when the soil temperature is cold, we would say, ideally, if we want to get the best possible comparison here, uh, it, you'd only require 5% of the, of the iron paint to be removed in uh, order to get sort of optimal conditions here. Um, when we get to the warmer conditions, however, uh, something like 20 to 30% paint removal, we, we sort of get a minimum of these, uh, uh, these errors. And depending on whether you would prefer you know, your errors to be you know, wet but not reducing as opposed to reducing but not wet. Um, and I don't know, six one half a dozen the other. Uh, they're independent sort of observations. So I don't know that one is preferable to another. But uh, you know, under these, when it's warmer, maybe 30% as a threshold is not so bad uh, for, for iron. But um, up here, under these cooler conditions, which you would say would be like early growing season conditions, having a requirement of 30% removal seems really unnecessarily conservative. You're gonna miss a lot of soils. And the reality is that some of these, if we came back and we put them in a month later when the soil temperatures were warmer, they would meet the reducing conditions. So it's really the colder conditions, the sort of the slower microbial activity at that point, which is responsible. 
Now, if we look at the manganese data, it, it's quite interesting. Uh, under the cooler conditions, what we see is that somewhere between about 10 and 30% removal of the manganese paint gives us this optimal condition. And again, depending on whether we prefer to see one type of inconsistency versus another, uh, you know, you could pick anywhere between about 10 and 30, but this sort of represents kind of this minimal area of inconsistency between the hydrological observations and the reducing condition observations. And when we get to warmer conditions, then because the, the microbes remove paint faster, we'd need probably a higher uh, uh, threshold for the manganese removal uh, up somewhere up in this range. But um, so to, to kind of summarize, I think when we're early in the growing season, when the soil temperatures are cold, we would best be served by having something like maybe a 20 to 30% uh, threshold removal for manganese paint. Um, but when it's warmer, when the soil temperatures go higher, we could use that same 20 or 30% threshold, but in this case for iron oxide paint removal. And so, um, you know, I, I think the, the current requirement is really too con way too conservative and uh, we miss a lot of the soils that are reducing because uh, of this high threshold requirement for iron. If we're using manganese, it would actually work, I think, quite well. So our final sort of overall observations and conclusions, both iron uh, coated iris and, and manganese coated iris both demonstrate biogeochemical reduction in the soil. And, uh, but the iron of course gets reduced under much more strongly reducing conditions. Uh, as expected, the coatings of manganese uh, get removed uh, reduces and are removed faster uh, and to a greater degree than iron does. That's predicted based on the thermodynamics. And we think that this current threshold of 30% removal of iron coatings with the National Technical Committee, it may be appropriate for later in the growing season when soil temperatures are warmer, but early in the growing season, uh, it's really unnecessarily conservative. Uh, we, we, we miss a lot. The uh, the manganese coated devices, we think they, these have particular utility early in the growing season when the soil temperatures are cooler, but that's also when the water tables commonly tend to be higher. And so uh, if we use this threshold of 20-30% manganese removal early in the growing season, this would be good. And for a lot of like restoration projects, this is when you really want to make these observations because as the growing season progresses, many of these seasonally saturated wetlands begin to dry down and they may no longer be saturated uh, once the soil temperatures begin to warm up very much following leaf out. So we believe that the National Technical Committee really should develop or uh, consider developing some temperature dependent iris standards uh, for documenting reducing conditions in hybrid soils and that those would best include both manganese coatings and iron coatings. So with that, I thank you for your attention. Hope you enjoyed this. Maybe it prompted some questions. If so, please feel free to reach out to me and, uh, and let me know what you think. Thanks very much.